Uh, here in studio with us now in New York is the top Democrat on the House Intelligence Committee, uh, Congressman Adam Schiff of California. Congressman, it's good to have you here tonight. Thank you. It's good to be with you. Uh, we never know exactly what within your remit on the Intelligence Committee is going to be the subject of discussion tonight. Obviously, it's this, uh, this news that the United States has launched nearly 60 Tomahawk cruise missiles, apparently from ships in the Mediterranean, uh, targeting a Syrian air base on the western side of that country. Let me first just uh, get your reaction, find out how much you know about this. Well, I received a call from the Director of National Intelligence uh, not long, I think, after the missiles were on their way, and, uh, and, and he has cleared me to share this. Uh, it was, I think, close to 70 missiles fired from ship. Uh, at uh, a single target. Uh, that target was the airfield where it is believed that the chemical weapons attack originated from. Uh, it is, I think, at the present not the intention to have more than this single strike, but of course the administration is reserving uh, their options uh, depending on whether the regime responds against uh, our troops or takes any other action against uh, U.S. Uh, targets or allies. Uh, but uh, it was our best intelligence, uh, per the director, that this is where the attack, the chemical weapons attack, originated from, uh, and uh, and that was the response. When you say this is where the chemical weapons attack originated from, meaning that Syrian aircraft that dropped the munitions that appear to have been chemical weapons munitions in this attack on Tuesday, that's the field they took off? Uh, that's the field, as well as apparently some of the facilities uh, involved in uh, creating the chemical munitions that would go on that aircraft. Uh, this, of course, isn't the first chemical weapons attack by the regime. Uh, and, uh, you know, one of the concerns I have about the action, you know, I, I certainly think it was um, on the range of military options, one of the more limited options. It didn't utilize aircraft. There wasn't uh, the risk of loss of life of our pilots. Uh, they also uh, evidently did everything they could to vet the site to make sure there wouldn't be human casualties, wouldn't be Russian casualties. But it is obviously a very abrupt change of course by the administration uh, from just a few days ago when they said basically it's up to the Syrian people to decide who will remain the leader of Syria as if uh, the Russians, the Iranians and Hezbollah weren't involved. Uh, and of course this wasn't the first time we've seen those terrible images, but uh, it was the first time we got a sense that the president recognized the gravity of his office mm -hmm. uh, because those were very much the same kind of photos President Obama was confronted with, and of course, President Trump had a very different reaction when he wasn't the commander in chief. Now he is. Um, but, uh, you know, I would certainly strongly caution the administration um, not to make this a military effort to change the regime. Uh, now, I fully concur that that regime has to go, uh, because as long as Assad is there, that fighting is going to go on, that terrible war is going to go on. Uh, but this is not something that can be accomplished uh, via the air at a standoff location. Uh, at most, we can hope that this will deter the regime from using chemical weapons again. Uh, that is probably the most significant thing you could hope for, uh, as well as a deterrent to other regimes in the future about using chemical weapons. Uh, but there are still a lot of issues to be resolved, and one of them for the Congress is all of this is being done, not just the attack today, but the presence of our troops there. All of this is being done without congressional vote, any congressional authorization, uh, and uh, Congress really needs to deal with this. Was this, um, was this strike legal? Uh, well, uh, I did ask the director that question. What's the legal basis for this? Uh, what's the U.S. legal basis and what's the international legal basis? Uh, that was out of his lane, as I thought it might be. That's really not uh, directly the responsibility of the DNI, uh, but that's a question Congress needs to ask. But I think we already know the answer to the question in terms of U.S. law. Uh, and that is none of what we're doing in Syria is authorized. And this is an issue I took with the Obama administration. Uh, I introduced an AOMF that would authorize the use of force against ISIS and Al Qaeda. Um, I'm going to be reintroducing that after the recess. But even that authorization, even the argument the Obama administration used that the pre-existing authorizations were broad enough to go after ISIS in Syria, um, that rationale doesn't hold it up. But even if it did, it wouldn't extend to attacks like this one on the regime. If the um, administration sees this as a standalone, one-off strike, 
uh, that this isn't the first in an escalating military campaign, as you seem to indicate that was the, uh, that was the gist that, uh, of the message tonight that you got from the Director of National Intelligence. Does that affect whether or not it's legal? Does a one-off strike require a different amount of authorization from the Congress, legally speaking, than, uh, this, than an escalating campaign? Um, no. I mean, the Congress should still uh, be involved in an authorization even of a single attack of this magnitude. Um, there may be a legal rationale that the White House offers that, well, these chemical weapons were a threat to our own troops, so they could have been used against our troops. Um, that's a tough argument to make, I think, here. Uh, then, of course, there's the challenge of making the argument under international law for the intervention. That's a problem that the Obama administration was similarly wrestling with. but. Uh, it's really clear, I think, what the congressional obligation is here, and that is we still need to have a vote on whether we should be using military force at all in Syria. Uh, and unfortunately, over the last several years, there's been this terrible confluence of interest between then the Obama administration, which didn't want to have to devote the political muscle to getting that through the Congress, and a Congress that didn't want to have to vote on it. Uh, a few of us you know, have been trying, Tim Kaine, myself, uh, and a handful of others, but, uh, but we've never been able to generate sufficient political will to actually force a vote on this. Congressman, let me ask you to go back to the initial uh, point that you raised, which is um, the decision-making process that led to this. Obviously, this does represent a major shift in course by the administration, not just to escalate to military force, but to strike against the Syrian regime at all. As you mentioned last week, um, the Secretary of State was saying a week ago today, the Secretary of State was saying that it is up to the Syrian people whether or not Assad must go. Uh, we also had the uh, UN ambassador, Nikki Haley, saying last week that uh, the United States is not looking to bring about regime change. Um, the president himself, faced with previous chemical weapons attacks by Bashar al-Assad, had said that there should be no invasion, there should be no U.S. military force in response. Um, there there has been a 180 degree turn that has that was not signaled for very long that came about very very rapidly what is your perception of of why that happened what are your concerns about that is it possible that this attack on tuesday was just so egregious that it was worth throwing out the entire previous strategy and inventing a new one on the spot well i have a couple of reactions the first is um in that footage we saw so often of those photographs of those kids that were suffocating uh, you also had, uh, and I don't know if it was a physician or a parent, um, who was saying, no one is doing anything about this. Uh, how can the world allow this to happen? No one is doing anything about this. That, to me, is the most powerful argument uh, against standing still, doing nothing, uh, and countenancing this by our inaction. That gentleman, I thought, made the most powerful and eloquent argument that something has to be done. Uh, and we have this awful, awful paralysis in the United Nations, which is really the body that ought to authorize action against people who are gassing their own citizens. But with the Russian veto, with the Chinese veto or inaction, getting that done has been impossible. But what is the answer to that? Does the, does the world just sit still and let people be gassed? Uh, I think, you know, that's what the administration is confronting, this administration and the last administration. Um, what concerns me uh, about the, the last 24, 48 hours is this attack, as awful as it was, wasn't the first. It's one of several by the regime. Um, and it does concern me that we not have an impulsive uh, administration that is ready to completely change direction, uh, that uh, isn't necessarily thinking through what are all the consequences here. Um, what I would have argued before today is we use coercive diplomacy with Russia. They made this bargain. They brokered this bargain. Uh, Assad would get rid of his chemical weapons. He obviously didn't. Uh, and use coercive pressure, build pressure uh, to use force if Russia doesn't get their client uh, under control and put an end to this. Uh, and the marshalling of that coalition would have put a lot of pressure on Russia. Well, that's all in the rearview mirror at this point. Mm. Um, you know, it does, I think, send a message to other places like North Korea, uh, that this administration is not unwilling to use force. Uh, and, you know, that may have a salutary impact in other places, but I do worry that uh, this president, who now has this responsibility of office, um, not act impulsively, that these things really need to be thought through. Uh, if we're lucky, there won't have been civilian casualties, and if we're
here still, there won't have been Russian ca casualties. Uh, but even these single strikes uh, can have a danger of getting away from their original purpose. Let alone trying to understand what the uh, knock-on consequences will be in terms of the way all the multivariate actors here 